today is Wednesday, January 10th, and I've got for you the anniversary of four sports moments that are funny, dubious, and record-setting. And now, a word from our title sponsor. Are all financial advisors fiduciaries? Fewer than you think, not knowing could reduce your lifestyle. Hi, I'm Mitch Kramer, founder and CEO of Fluent Financial. A fiduciary is a regulatory term to reduce conflicts of interest in wealth management. A fiduciary always works in your best interest. A non-fiduciary advisor might put their compensation or company ahead of yours. At Fluent Financial, we are certified financial planners acting as fiduciary advisors. To learn more, go to FluentFinancial.com or Fluent Financial's YouTube channel. What's damaged your roof? Hail, water, wind, maybe just aid. Oh, Hail Roofing is where to turn. They've provided the best options, advice, and solutions, be it residential or commercial. For more than a decade now, you can trust Oh, Hail to restore your property expertly. Oh, Hail. That's O H H H A I L. Ohail.com. With seasonings, there seem to be so many. And then they just sit in your spice cabinet forever. That's not true of goodness steak season. I know the name steak suggests that it's very good on steak, which it is. But goodness steak seasoning is so versatile. Use it on veggies, burgers, soups, even popcorn. Get it by going to the website bringthetasty.com. Goodness, this seasoning is good. Let's look at this week because there are four memorable anniversaries in sports. First of all, January 3rd, 1920, the Boston Red Sox owner, Harry Frazee, decides to sell Babe Ruth to the Yankees. Massive, massive deal. Ruth, who'd been unbelievably good pitching and hitting for the Red Sox, goes to the Yankees, and in return, Boston gets what kind of players? They get no kind of players. They get $125,000 in cash. Can you imagine what that's worth in today's dollars? Being That was 1920. And they get a $350,000 loan. Why did Frazee make a deal like this? Well, first, the loan of the money from the Yankees pays off Fenway Park, the home park of the Red Sox. And the $125,000 he got? Harry Frazee liked something more than baseball, despite the fact that he owned the Red Sox. He liked Broadway more than baseball. And he took the $125,000 and invested it in a Broadway show. That show, No No Nanette, became a huge hit. But the Red Sox, they didn't become a huge hit. It'd be more than 80 years before Boston won the World Series again. On the same date, January 3rd, but 1983, the Cowboys' Tony Dorsett sets the all-time record for longest run in NFL history. The Cowboys are backed up to their own one-yard line. Dorsett bursts through a gaping hole at right guard, veers out toward the right sideline. Side Dorsett has terrific speed. The defenders from Minnesota give chase, but it's fruitless. Dorsett winds up going 99 yards for the longest ever, and by the way, it'll never be topped, run in NFL history. What makes it even more bizarre, though, is that Dorsett wasn't supposed to get the handoff. That was supposed to go to his fullback running mate, Ron Springs, whom the Cowboys thought could wedge out a few yards on the plate. And what makes it even more bizarre is with the Cowboys bringing players on the field and taking players off the field, Dallas actually ran the play with only 10 men on the field and still broke the longest record run in NFL history. Next, let's go to January 5th, 
1985. The Giants and Bears are playing a scoreless game, and the Giants are backed up deep in their territory. And on fourth down, the Giants are hoping that their punter, Sean Landetta, by the way, Sean Landetta was a good punter, that he'll bail them out with a long kick. And they line up. Landetta standing, actually, a bit in the end zone, takes the step, steps forward, drops the ball, swings his right foot, and misses. The punter fails to touch the ball on the punt. The ball simply bounces around at his feet, where the Bears player, Sean Gale, picks it up and skips seven yards into the end zone for a touchdown. The Giants never recover, losing 21 to nothing on the worst punt in NFL history. And finally, we finish with an anniversary from tomorrow, January 11th, 1990. This is truly an example of of foggy thinking. They're racing in the nighttime at Delta Downs in Vinton, Louisiana, and there is a fog that is just pea soup heavy. It, they're punch of the races. You couldn't see the horses because the fog was, was so thick, and they're getting for a race for the, they're getting ready for the race, I believe the seventh on the card, and it's for really cheap, slow horses, but some of them cheaper and slower than others. Jockey Sylvester Carmuche is atop a horse called Landing Officer, who had one major problem as a racehorse. He was incredibly slow. So Carmuche knows he's not going to win the race. It's a mile race, which means they break from the gate off to the left, run by the finish line, go all the way around the track, and finish right at the finish line again in front of the grandstand. Somewhere in the few minutes before the start of that race, a plot begins to develop in the mind of jockey Sylvester Camuche. When the gates open, he doesn't take off. The others take off, the other eight, but Sylvester Carmucci silently, slowly guides his horse over to a position standing at the top of the stretch at Delta Downs. He's going to simply wait for the horses to come around, and when he hears footsteps, he's going to take off with landing officer and win the race. And the others go by the finish line, make the trip around the track. As they get to the head of the stretch, Carmuche goes to work on landing officer. Probably goes to work a little early because landing officer, this nag, wins the race by 24 lengths and he'd have gotten away with it. Actually, he did get away with it, by the way. The race became official before a lot of the other riders said, what's going on? We never saw him in front of the field, and the tape goes to the Louisiana Racing Commission. And they see that when the horses came by the finish line the first time, there were eight of them. When they came by the second time, there were nine of them. Sylvester Carmuche's ruse ends in him getting a year's long suspension from racing and a heavy fine. But those fortunate few at Delta Downs that evening who'd backed landing officer, they laughed all the way to the bank. Today's episode has been brought to you by Fluent Financial, by O'Hell Roofing, and by Goodness Steak Seasoning. Just Wondering is a production of DSP Media for FanStream Sports. You can find Norm's show along with other great programming at fanstreamsports.com. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Just Wondering. If you enjoyed it, please hit follow. 
Then, each episode every weekday will be delivered straight to you. And, if we might ask one more favor, please share it with friends. I'm Norm Hitzkus, and every day, I'll be just wondering about something. And I'm Mary Hitchkiss, and I'm just wondering, too. 